Welcome everybody to What's NXT for May 22nd, 2019. I am your host, the Rated R Reviewer, Stephen Osborne, joined as always by the gentleman, the General Jerry Slaughter. Good morning, wrestling fans. Support! No DQ! <laughs> NXT tonight was kind of a mixed bag. Yeah. And by that, we had five in-ring segments, but two of those were just promos-ish, kind mm -hmm. of. Um, exchanges, you know, little fisticuffs, but not matches. We had three matches, two men's matches and a women's match. One of the men's matches was a tag team match. That gets billed during the show for the main event. I never understood this. Why would you go into taping a show not having a main event that is the final match of the show booked already? Yeah. Like... How does something get booked during the one-hour show and slotted into the most prestigious spot on the card? Because Triple H is the man. <laughs> Seriously, he made us care about this match in less than 30 minutes. He said, look, I don't need to have him. I'll just find some guys during the show <laughs> that are already there, and I'll get something in. I'll pencil something in there, but well, no. The the, it's, it's, the first segment of the night, after the uh, video package that we see right at the beginning, sets up for everything else. Okay, so we've got a video recap of the Viking Raiders and the Street Profits from last week, where the Street Profits come out and challenge the Viking Raiders since they were going to turn over the titles anyway. Give us a shot at them. We know we can beat you. Turns out they couldn't, and neither could any of the rest of the uh, NXT tag team roster. No contact. Everybody came out trying to beat on everybody, and the War Raiders laid out... Fucking all of them. Yeah. And then they stood then they laid the ring, on the belts. Laid the belts down and they took a bow. Now they cut off the uh, the video footage or the video package right before the bow. So we didn't get to see that. And so you're like, well, are they going to follow through with whether or not these guys are leaving and turning over the titles? Turns out yes. immediately we get Regal. Um, he's in his office. He announces that, the, yes, the titles have been vacated. And... Uh, he is making a four-way ladder match for NXT TakeOver 25. We are going to have the Street Profits. That is Angelo Dawkins and Montez Ford off the top of my head. Yep. Forgotten Sons. That's uh, Steve Cutler and Wesley Blake with Jackson Riker on their side. This is the ladder match. I expect Jas Jackson Riker to fucking get involved. Yeah. We're going to have Oni Lorcan and Danny Birch. And then we're going to have uh, Undisputed... Uh, what dragons? Oh, red dragons. Red dragons. We've got uh, O'Reilly and Bobby Fish. That's going to be a hell of a fucking match. Oh yeah. We actually get several NXT Takeover announcements this week. Um, I think we got two or three on just this show. Yeah. I think last week we got the announcement of Adam Cole versus Johnny Gargano for the NXT Championship, and that ends up being our first official segment of the night because um, Undisputed come out. All four of them come to the ring for a promo, and basically Adam Cole says um, they are stronger than ever, they are more on the same page than ever, um, and pretty soon they're all going to be draped in gold, because at this next NXT TakeOver, three of the four of them have shots at championships, mm -hmm. and they're going to follow through and get all of those. And, of course, he ends up talking about Johnny Gargano, because his championship match at TakeOver is against Johnny Gargano, which of course brings out Johnny Gargano, who starts to do math for us. Yes. Very slowly for Adam Cole. Sh shocks the school system, as, as, as he says. Now here's the thing. I get both arguments. Uh, Adam Cole says, remember, I pinned you already. And Johnny Gargano's like, well, if you remember, it was two out of three falls, and I won two falls to your one, and technically won the match. And I'm sitting here thinking, yeah, but Adam Cole pinned you, and it was the first fall. Yeah. So let's say there was a repeat of that match in the next match. Adam Cole wins by a pinfall on the first fall, which happens to be the only fall. Mm -hmm. So I understand Cole's argument. It kind of makes uh, Johnny Gargano look like a bit of a douche. Yeah. But really what Johnny Gargano is here is bait. Yeah. He is attention bait. He is getting the attention of all four of them in the ring, which gives Matt Riddle a chance to come out from the crowd, which I knew he was coming. 
because I heard a ruckus in the crowd. Yeah, the, the, there definitely was a scuffle. Because the, the Undisputed Air is in the ring, and Johnny Gargano didn't just say anything particularly funny, and the crowd starts uh, cheering. And I'm like, yeah, somebody's coming, and it's bound to be Matt Riddle. Sure enough. Still no shoes. Who goes straight, straight beeline for a Roderick Strong. Mm-hmm. And they start to break him off of there, but then Johnny Gargano runs down to make the save, and it's a four on two, and they still throw them back. They... Yeah, I mean it's I mean they're baby faces, and yeah. it's, it's just where so, it's where it's at right now. So all four on the street era are out on the outside of the ring. Gargano and um, Riddle are left in the ring, and sure enough. That's when the referees come out to break yeah. everything up. You <laughs> heard a referee come out to try and break them apart, but uh, by the time it already broke. <laughs> my guess at this point was that we were going to see a tag team match with Matt Riddle and Gargano versus Cole and Roderick Strong, and I'm, of course that's not going to happen. That gives you too much of what you want to see come NXT Takeover. Mm -hmm. Um, what we end up getting is a slightly different version, but we we will move on to that. Um, do you have any other notes on this? Because it was it kind of dragged a little bit for a promo. Yeah. With all of these, but once the once the fight broke out, it all made sense. Oh yeah, it made plenty of sense after that. And the match we end up getting actually makes a little more sense to me because th that way you had the setup that if um. There was going to be any form of attack. You'd have the two main protagonists of the Undisputed Era, or antagonists, antagonists, yes. antagonists yeah, uh, attacking at the end of the match, and it kind of, like I already saw it kind of coming, maybe like after the match or causing a disqualification one or the other. But at the same time, like the whole segment was just great. I thought. It's a, it pretty much had Cole doing what he does best, which is, you know, talking. And then Gargano doing what he thinks he does best, which is, you know, talking. And it, it already set for an interesting dynamic for for a match. And I'm glad we actually got it. So, so this feud, this story, will bookend the show. Yeah. I like that. Mm -hmm. um, without it being something too corny, like where it's people that aren't feuding, but like somebody will come out, and then somebody else will come out, and then somebody else will come out, and then Teddy Long will come out, and it'll be a three on two handy. I don't know. You know, <laughs> I, I really hate it when people have nothing to do with each other, and then suddenly they're in a match like this. Uh, yeah. I think Aaron Riff would agree with me there. Um, that's one of those things. I gave him three wish wishes. Mm -hmm. From W, what things he could change in WWE? He's like, I'd get the fuck rid of that. Yeah, and I, I totally agree. Um, it's just it's outdated because it's so cliche. Anyway, to go ahead and spoil this, uh, what we're talking about here is the main event of Matt Riddle and Johnny Gargano versus Kyle O'Reilly and Bobby Fish. And this also set sets up for Bo um, Kyle O'Reilly and Bobby Fish to actually. Show a little bit more, like of their, like that they're ready for their four cor four corners ladder match at Takeover. So that gives them something to do as well. But before we get that announcement, we have our first match of the night, and it's Sean Maluda, who uh, I didn't recognize. I've probably seen him wrestle before. They said he wrestled Dijakovic. They said he wrestled uh, Jackson Riker, and I'm like, I don't remember him wrestling either one of them. But whatever. Uh, so I'm like, who's he jobbing to? But then it's Mansoor, yeah. who himself we've seen job twice in the last, what, two or three weeks. But he's been impressive as a face it's and a heel. Sort of. Sort of impressive. Mm -hmm. I'll grant you that. Sort of. Uh, in this case, it's an okay opening match. Mm -hmm. Thank God the, the segment with the Undisputed Era and Gargano and, and Riddle opened the show. Oh, yeah. Because it wasn't that great of a match. Um, but I've got a few notes. What did you think about the match, Jerry? I didn't know really what to expect because, like you said, we pretty much have uh, two jobbers in a ring. And Maluda, I had never heard of. So, I'm like, are they going to actually give Mansoor a win? Because I'm okay with that, too. He's been jobbing like crazy. But the matches that we have seen him in, he's been impressive in. Like he, even the one that um, was in Brooklyn, I think, for NXT UK. 
Yeah. And that was a great match, I thought. And he came out as a heel, and it was cool. But with this, um, with this match, he didn't really do anything out of the ordinary, but he's fine-tuning what he actually can do in the ring, and it looks good. I think it looks great. Maluda, kind of forgettable. I mean, it's the fact that I've seen so many freaking Samoans in the ring lately that it's, like, absurd. But, I mean, it's just kind of a breath of fresh air for me because I can't, don't really know what to make of him. He could be either, he could be a tweener and be okay, or just one of those guys you either like or you just hate, and he pulls it off in the ring, so I'm, I'm happy with him. Either way, he plays a baby face on NXT, but he's a heel on NXT UK. Well, I think it's the fact there's an NXT UK broadcast, he was kind of more or less invading it. So. Yeah, but he, he definitely has two personas, one baby face and one heel, and he has turned that switch in between those shows. And it just it's, it's weird to see, because usually they are pretty good with continuity when it comes to good guy, bad guy. Yeah. At least in NXT they are. Um, I've got uh, some offense from Maluda that was okay. Of course, he gets the Samoan drop in because, hey, folks, he's Samoan, and uh, he follows that with a haluva kick into the corner, which is it, it was a real casual looking haluva kick. Yeah, honestly, um, it wasn't a haluva kick. It wasn't a helva kick. <laughs> well, it was the, it was the same move for it, but it it was a sort of a la yeah. kick. And then he comes off the middle rope with a code breaker that really actually looked badass. That, that looked great. That was an awesome fucking ticket to ride off the middle rope. Yeah. Uh, he got a near fall, though. And then Mansoor, they have some more uh, back and forth. Mansoor gets a snap German suplex. And then uh, slingshots, I think, from the uh, the apron, right, right, right. into a neck breaker. Really crisp looking. And then picks him up and does what I would call an inverted drift away. So he picks him up off of an inverted DDT, or a reverse DDT, but picks him up and then spins him for almost, it, you, it would be a swinging neck breaker if he was facing the other way, but it ends up being a swinging cutter. Yeah. So, I don't know how else to describe it if, uh, I think it's really cool looking. I recommend um, it, it, checking it, out Mansoor's finishing move. I, I was going to say, if, if Davari hadn't used it, like the name already, I would have called it the Magic Carpet Ride. <laughs> sure, why not? It, it, it's a cool name. After this, we get uh, the announcement. Kathy Kelly is outside of Regal's office, and she's telling us that currently Undisputed Era is in there, and you can hear him arguing with Regal. Regal is telling him to get the fuck out. <laughs> More or basically. less. Bugger off. <laughs> and they leave and pay no mind or mention to Kathy Kelly. They're just out. And then she gently <laughs> raps, raps, raps you actually, on you actually, Regal's door. You actually hear, like, uh, Adam Cole say, it's like, fish or ride, they'll take care of him this night. It's whatever. <laughs> well, Regal comes to the door looking like, I don't know, dude. He looks like he just got done wiping spit off his face. Like, they all spit on him. Like, I don't probably know. did. Adam Cole probably got in his face, was yelling at him. And... I want to say it looks like they slapped him around a little bit, but <laughs> he's the GM. I don't think they did that, but certainly I could see him all spitting on him. Yeah. He's just like... <sighs> Especially Roderick. <laughs> just... Roderick. <laughs> anyway, the announcement here is, like we said, the main event for tonight, the tag team match. So up next, we have Velveteen Dream in his uh, in-ring promo that we were promised last week. Well, we were promised he was going to be there. Yeah. So it could have been a match. And it was on I was hoping it was, for a match. It was on the graphic before we pressed play. Yeah. Um, the yeah. only mention. On the WWE Network, it was the only thing that they used to sell this show with in the description for this episode was that Velveteen Dream was going to be there. So, woo! Yep. Um, spotlight's on him, though, apparently. Mm -hmm. He comes out and spends a few minutes saying absolutely nothing. But the crowd loves it anyway. And, and it's fun to listen you, to you him want to speak about the dream. himself. It's People just, want to feel the dream. Yeah. But they can't handle the dream. I mean, there's a lot of that's what she said moments in there. But at the same time, a lot when of Joey you understand Ryan his isms. character, it's not, <laughs> it's not so bad. But, yeah, basically he was just waiting on being interrupted. Yes. And we were expecting Dominic Dijakovic. 
because this was the feud that has started building a few weeks ago and that's not who we got um we got music well not music it's entrance music so starts off to me it sounded like girls on film i was like why the hell would they buy the rights to that song <laughs> and who is using it <laughs> and then i'm like oh that's right you know the runway shit prince pretty. pretty yeah tyler breeze is back again um because he came back a few maybe it was a few months ago hasn't been that long uh, or maybe that was NXT UK. It all blurs together, but he's come back before. And in, what is it against Gargano? Might have been against Gargano. It was. It, it was. It was actually the week I, I wasn't here, and you and Noah Foster was uh, like the, the, the uh, and, and, well, There you go. So uh, he's basically challenging uh, Velveteen Dream for the title. He doesn't say as much. He barely even comments on the title. Mm -hmm. It's more of a duel of egos here, where Velveteen Dream says the spotlight is his now, but Tyler Breeze is, as, he, as you said, an OG. Yeah. He's the OG NXT, and the crowd seems to agree with him. Yeah. They were chanting, welcome home. They were chanting, Breeze is gorgeous, and... First thing he said, he said um, Tyler Breeze is home. And, like, they naturally erupted. Because pretty much any, like, superstar that you have from the red, blue, or purple brands at this point that comes back down to NXT or, hell, even NXT UK is going to be welcomed with open arms because they know they're actually going to treat you right there. Oh, yeah. I, I, I'm positive that Tyler Breeze ap appreciated being in front of a crowd that appreciates him. I think he appreciated being in the ring and getting airtime. That wasn't necessarily a joke. It was setting up for something. Well, we will just wait because we will get there. But yeah, this is not for naught. Uh, we are going to get a match out of this. Yeah. And there's an announcement coming and we'll just wait. But uh, this was okay. I mean... The, the, the last shot with Tyler Breeze was just so great because the dream... Being the condescending prick he is, offers uh, Todd Breeze a chance to go ahead and take uh, take a selfie with the champ. Yeah, so basically Breeze is calling Dream a knockoff because he's yeah. the OG, and Dream is basically using his version of his gimmick. And uh, Dream counters by saying that Breeze is just a boy who likes to play cops and robbers, <laughs> like fashion police nod. So uh, Dream says that uh, he should take a selfie with him and the title because he's going to go. Yeah, it's, it's, gonna... Like, it's like you, you go ahead and you can leave now. <laughs> and I don't know why. Why would he offer that? Because, of course, Breeze is going to take him on the offer and he goes to do the selfie. And, of course, they put it up on the screen, which I, I love how they do that. It's really yeah. cool. But, uh, of course... Somebody's going to do so. I just kind of figured it would be Velveteen Dream. Yeah, Velveteen Dream. Because he's the one that set the up the selfie. Yeah. But no, uh, Breeze, what does he say to him? Uh, it's it just a word of advice. If you put your name on your trunk and no one calls you up, it's because you're not, they're not interested. Yeah, <laughs> so he's making reference to Dream trying to get called up to the main roster. Yeah. And uh, then clocks him in the face. With the cell phone. Yeah, <laughs> just wicked punch to the face. Yeah, I wonder what kind of cell phone case is on there. You know, this is, <laughs> this is no otter box shit. This, 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 this is adamantium because it knocks some dream through a loop. Yeah. Knock the shirt clean off of him. <laughs> so after this, we get Kathy Kelly interviewing Tyler Breeze on his way out. And uh, she asked him why he came out there and didn't say anything about the title. He okay. just said he wanted to introduce Dream to an inspired Prince Pretty. Because yeah. he said that Velveteen Dream has inspired him, whereas on the main roster, he was not inspired. So, so yeah. A lot of inspiration going on. Oh, yeah. Up next, we've got Candice LeRae versus Reina Gonzalez, our second match of the night. And... I wrote down the names and I immediately underlined Candice LeRae because yeah. there ain't no way Reina Gonzalez is beating her. 
in a match that has no hype. Oh, I'll say Rainy Gonzalez is huge though. Yeah, she, she is six foot tall. She she is a big lady. They come big in Texas. <laughs> yeah, I am I am six foot. Jerry wouldn't know anything about that because he is way taller than I am. <laughs> I don't know if you can tell by watching the video, but this is a big gentleman. <laughs> Just not, not a lot going on in this match. A lot of power moves out of um, Rain Gonzalez and Candice Array pretty much doing her best to try and bring, bring her down, but wasn't working for a long time. This was a really basic match for oh, yeah. most of it. It wasn't exciting. It wasn't really all that entertaining. Um, but then Raina picks up Candice Array in like it's almost like she was going to do a deep six, but Candice LeRae ran into the move like she was doing something offensive. Mm -hmm. But gets caught like a deep six, and I'm like, the fuck kind of offensive move are you going to pull out of that? Because <laughs> then Reyna stops her, swings her back around, and she goes to do what she had done previously, which was this spinning uh, power slam. Yeah. Now before, it didn't really look much like a power slam. He even said it wasn't at all. But she spun her feet first instead of head first. Usually when they do a swing into a power slam, they come down head first. I don't know why. Maybe it's to keep the legs from getting tripped up and caught up. Yeah. Maybe a, a knee injury or a calf injury like we, we feared uh, Noam Dar from a few weeks ago on NXT UK. Uh, but no, she lands one of them, but then she goes for another one. And Candace kind of spins out of it and goes for a roll-up. But she's so close to the ropes, she rolls her through the ropes to the outside, takes her out out there. I actually have a few notes on this match. Um, <laughs> Lorray goes for a springboard crossbody. I think she's on the rape apron, and then she goes to spring off the bottom rope. Um, but Raina catches her, but then she kind of skittles <laughs> over her back. <laughs> she... she you know, slides over her back and pushes her into the ring steps. Oh, scamper. <laughs> and these these ring steps are so big compared to the amount of space that they have in between the ring and the rails. It kind of plays in heavily the main event. Yeah, well, there's a, a big spot that distracted me from a lot of that match. But anyway, uh, after that, LeRae, uh comes in, does a little more offense, and then she does her lion salt, which she is still way overshooting. Um, maybe it's the competitor's fault no, for not being close Gonzalez enough. Gonzalez actually, like, tried to get in a position for this time. She, off the, uh, missile drop kick from Ken Slurray. And I actually saw it kind of happening. I saw her just kind of roll. And almost, like, readjust at the same time. And... Now, if you guys don't know what we're talking about, Candice Slurray does a lion salt, like, to the middle of the fucking ring. Yeah. Like, she way overshoots this thing. I don't know if it's on purpose or not. I mean, that's a really great thing Yeah. if you position your opponent correctly, but all of her opponents seem to position themselves the oh, way a really regular nice. person, not a superwoman, would do a lion salt. Um, eventually, I'm sure she'll get there, or maybe she'll undershoot it. So or maybe she'll just land. get rid of it and do something else. Yeah, I'm not a fan of her having the lion salt as a finisher, but she, yeah, that's her finisher. She gets the pinfall off of that. And I knew she was getting the pinfall, but it was kind of an underwhelming match. But well, it's the, all right. The, the story was after the match. Really, at this point, I'm just counting down to the main event. Yeah. Because we've got Undisputed Era versus Gargano and Riddle, who I'm getting bigger and bigger on every week. Yeah. By the way. Oh, yeah. R Riddle's just won me over at But this, this point. segment's not over. No. Because a... after the victory, who comes out but Shayna Baszler... Jessamyn Duke and Marina Shafir. Okay. And they surround the ring as much as three people can. <laughs> they, they, they look, the sad part is they look so intimidating until they actually start trying to do anything. <laughs> well, Candice LeRae did her best to fight them off, but it's three on one. Yeah. And even if somebody does come to help, it's still three on advantage two. Baszler. Mm -hmm. But when Io Shirai comes out to help, she brings back up in the form of a kendo stick. And she uses the fuck out of this oh, kendo stick. Oh, yes, she does. Man, she whacks away at all three of them. Baszler to the point to where by the time Baszler gets pulled out of the ring 
and she's hitting nothing but the ropes, that, that kendo stick starts shredding yep. at the tip. Um, yeah, so Io Shirai comes out using heel tactics, but in this case, I guess you excuse it because it would be three on one at that point. Yeah, it, it, it turned into three on three, I'm pretty sure. She might, as well, she might as well just have Caillou Sane out there just swinging her around. Well, still three on two because by that point, Candice Lorraine ain't helping her for shit. No. She's just laying there beat down. But considering that's the end of that match, I'm okay with it. Yeah. Underwhelming match, but great ending to the segment. It, you know, I, I'm it, even okay with Io Shirai swinging that kendo stick, man. That I was, was fun. I was about to say, it's giving Io Shirai a little bit of momentum going into their match at TakeOver. Where hopefully Shayna Baszler beats <laughs> Well, yeah, that's pretty much what's going to happen. Unless Baszler's getting called up, she better not lose that title again. She no. got to be the first and only two-time champion. Let her keep it till she's gone, She's man. not going anywhere without Shafir and Duke at this point. They're going to be a package deal. Maybe. Anyway, after this, uh, it, we get our announcement for NXT TakeOver 25 of Velveteen Dream versus Tyler Breeze for the North American Championship. Who didn't Prince, see that coming? Prince Pretty versus Prince Knockoff. <laughs> um, I'd like to see it turn into a triple threat match next week when somehow Dominic Dijakovic gets in, inserted, but I guess that's not going to happen. They they didn't mention him really at all, other than the fact that we had uh, those two guys in the first match lose matches to him. The, the only thing I can actually see is if they're not be using Dijakovic for a while for some reason... Or if they want to give Tyler Breeze more momentum, they'll put Breeze versus Dijakovic next week. But we are we get to we announce it for two matches for next week anyway, so I doubt they're gonna squeeze that in before takeover. Yeah, plus next week is probably the same taping as what we just watched. Yeah. So you're not gonna see those guys overused in no. front of the same crowd, hopefully. Um, just for the crowd's sake. <laughs> But that was that announcement for the North American Championship. That's the title match at TakeOver. Speaking of announcements, two matches for next week, as you said. We've got Mia Yim versus Bianca Belair. In and the rematch. rematch the way once. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> Honestly, yeah. I was fine with the match they had. The way it ended was great. It, yeah. Innovative. I dug it. Um, that's where Bianca Belair used her hair around the middle rope to secure the roll-up victory. Or the, the teeter-totter roll-up. The, the only thing I can see in that match is Mia Yim beating Bianca Belair. I don't want that. Or, or because there, there's really no implications for it at, at this point. They're both pretty much out of the title hunt, it looks like. Well, we also got another match announced here. The match that I had forgotten that we should have remembered was coming. Kushida versus Drew, Drew Gulak. Yeah. Set up, of course, by Drew Gulak coming out and watching Kushida beat whoever the fuck he beat. Last week or the week it before. It was Kona Reeves. There we go, Kona Reeves. That was last week. Mm -hmm. Man, I'd like to see them do better with Kona Reeves. But, I like the guy. I know a lot. Of, I know he's green, and a lot of people like point out all of his greens. But I, I see a guy that is really comfortable in his gimmick, mm -hmm. and I like the gimmick. Yeah. I just don't like his his finisher. But luckily, he's lost all his matches, so we haven't had to see mm -hmm. his finisher. Run with your finisher, Kona, so it gives them a reason to fall on their belly. Yes. Just saying. Anyway, so those are two matches next week. And finally, we are on to the main event. Yes. I, I was counting this down. This was this was so good of a match. I did one of those things that I do occasionally, and I just put the notebook down and watch the match. Mm -hmm. And well, I, I'm becoming... I hold my hand so I'm not like, oh, that was a spot I want to write down. No, just remember it, dumbass. Yeah, it's one of those situations where, as much as I hate to say it, Matt Riddle is starting to throw on matches like those, where you, you stop taking notes, and you and you watch the guy, you watch him wrestle, like his person, her persona that he does, there, anything going out to the ring, the whole bros fist bump thing, yeah, inspired, whatever. But at the same time, like when he gets to the ring, that bell rings. He's dead serious. His gimmick was inspired by every surfer movie from the 90s. <laughs> he, he, he comes in fucking point break and... <laughs> so... Goes all matrixy. <laughs> basically, the two spots for most of this match, most of the beginning of this match, were the two hot tags. Riddle getting the first, 
But then he gets, uh, I don't know, where did he get tripped up? Oh, the abs, because they were yeah. working on the abs. He goes to do that uh, gut wrench triple, that yep. gut wrench hat trick. Uh, gets two gut wrench suplexes onto Fish, and then O'Reilly comes in and breaks it up. But he grabs O'Reilly, and he does one on him and goes for a second, and his abs give out. Yeah. And this is where they take over and they start beating on him. And, you know, most of this match is the way matches go. The heels are beating on the faces who make a comeback, get the hot tag. Johnny Gargano gets a great hot tag. He comes in, he starts doing, like, reverse tag team moves where he's doing two moves on two different guys. Two different moves. You know, one in a headlock, kicks the other one in the face, drops the guy in a headlock kind of shit. He does, like, two or three of these. And Jerry's like... Why do I like to watch him versus two people all of a sudden? <laughs> I'm like, fuck, that's what he does, man. I was about to say, he's a tag team specialist. He's a, he's a, he's a creator of the whole hot tag moments. Oh, yeah. He's got to know what to do when uh, Ciampa's on the floor holding his neck. Yeah. <laughs> oh. So. But th th that's, that's the whole thing with um, Gargano is the fact that I still... I can see him as a singles competitor, but I'll forever see him more as part of a tag team. So, for him to be pulling off the hot the hot tag and pulling off these really cool like combinations, clotheslines, DDTs, whatever, it all it all just makes sense to me, and it all clicks, and that's why he's Johnny Wrestling. That's why he's Johnny Wrestling. My first note of this match was a holy fucking shit moment, like a Jesus. Gargano picks up, I think, O'Reilly. Yeah. <laughs> and lawn darts him towards uh, Matt, Matt Riddle, Riddle, who catches him with a high knee to the face. <laughs> I really love when uh, they do that off the top rope. Uh, who is it? The European Union. Eichner and Bartel. Eichner Bartel. Into the, uh, the... Vertical suplex. Vertical suplex. Delayed vertical suplex at that. Just the power of Eichner. But this was a much better uh, lawn dart. <coughs> I was about to say this. Whoa! Was, this, this was this was short and it was vicious because there wasn't really a lot of airtime going on. It was more just inertia. <laughs> and by this point, I've got my notes out, but the match doesn't last too much longer. Uh, Adam Cole comes out down the rampway, and immediately John, Johnny Gargano is on it. Suicide they got dive. the upper hand. Yeah, suicide dive, and he just starts beating the shit out of Adam Cole on the rampway to the point to where the ref comes out and he's like, well, he hasn't hit you yet. I guess I can't disqualify <laughs> this, but stop, man. Get back in the ring. We got a match to do right now. Ref is distracted. On the other side. Over over on the floor, over on the side, uh, hard camera side, we have uh, basically O'Reilly and Fish distracting Riddle long enough. I think F Fish had his foot or some shit. Yeah. But Roderick Strong runs in, boom, high knee. Just levels him, picks him up, does this wicked backbreaker across, lengthwise, up his spine, across the ape, the corner of the apron. Yeah. Like, he lands him or not, or, uh, at an angle where his spine hits along the corner of that apron. Fucking ow. Yep. Throws him in the ring where uh, Fish and O'Reilly are waiting. They do the high and low. Ref sees that somebody's making a pinfall all of a sudden. Gets back in the ring. One, two, three. I'm about to say, some people would consider, this, would consider this almost an upset. Even though it's like um, a very established tag team going against... Two like, guys that have never yeah. been a tag team before. Yeah, the, yeah but, yeah, but like you, you've actually... You and I had this discussion. Since you have the... Um, Pretty much the highest commodity right now in the company in Matt Riddle, and you have the NXT champion Gargano as a team. You would think, you, you would think, yes, this is just the fact that you've got the NXT champion in the match, regardless of who it is or what side he's on. If you beat that team, I would call it an upset. You yeah. know, that's the top guy in the company. So, on paper, it's an upset because he's the champ. But honestly, I mean, it's fucking, it's it's former tag champs. Guys that have tagged together for so long, they have such good chemistry together, and they can beat teams twice their size. Yeah. That's how good they are. Like, it's not an upset. No. They've got the Undisputed Era to come out with the shenanigans, and there's no way this is an upset. Like, they totally see this coming. You saw it coming. Yeah. 
Um, Man, my after, predictions suck. <laughs> after match, a four on two beat down, and they hold Johnny up backwards for the last shot. Some smack talk from Adam Cole. We go off the show with the Undisputed Era on top. Mm -hmm. And it looks like they are primed to win gold here in a week and a half. But who knows, man. Honestly, we've got one more episode to watch before we make those predictions. But join us in about a week's time. We will have that. Probably with Noah Foster. Maybe we'll get Cindy G on here. Who knows. They might do a Ladies of No DQ for NXT TakeOver, though, especially since it's 25. Oh, probably. The 25th one? Absolutely. I would think so. You know what? Those are good videos anyway, because all three of them actually watch NXT, I believe. Oh, do, do, should, should we give the um, congratulations to Aaron Rolka for being the uh, Predictions Champion for his last show? <laughs> yep, oh, so. Two-time uh, champ. Yep, so she, she won. So, I was looking for you to pull it off. There for the first two thirds of that pay per view. Oh, the, se the second the coin I, was just working for you. Uh, man. Yeah, the, the second we got to the um, uh, Elias match and the um, uh, what was it? I told you that was dumb. Yeah, Why that, are you that, using that, the coin? Just say Roman Reigns wins. <laughs> I, I, <laughs> you bet against Roman Reigns when it's not Brock Lesnar. Yeah, still. So. Oh well. Thing is, Elias got the chair shot, and he still lost. So anyway, and, and it's it weird that you would actually mention Brock. So <laughs> um, I'm not a fan of what happened, but nobody is. That's main roster. We're talking NXT. We're uh, talking about more important things. Yeah, that brings us to the end of the main event. And here on NXT, we rate the main event using the General's five star rating system. And as always, you go first, Jerry. Where do you rate this tag team match? I'd say three and a half. Plus the aftermatch. Well, well, that, that's what that's why I give the three and a half is the aftermatch, because um, seems so low. I was well, very entertained by this. Well, match. I thought I thought it was a great match for being pieced together right there at the start. Did of the you show. even called the story of the ribs because Matt Riddle comes out and he takes off his shirt or his hoodie. What the fuck? And he's got the fucking trainer's tape. On looks, his ribs. He, he looks like a Vans box. He does such a good job of selling that rib injury, that midsection injury, throughout the match, especially at the beginning when you're like, eh. Okay, so you actually have kind of given it to me. I'm probably going to bump it up to a four, just because it's actually setting it up to the uh, for the um, match between him and Roderick Strong. Because Roderick Strong, he's all about the backbreakers. He's all about the lung blowers. And it's all in that general area right there. And who attacked him at the end of the match, too? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, yeah. Like, this whole story is Matt Riddle and, um, Matt Riddle and Roderick Strong. But also, I'm thinking, it's, it's actually got us thinking before the show, before he's well on the air, we we're talking about the whole possibility of still an undisputed era breakup, or at least Cole being ousted and Roderick Strong taking the lead. What would be, put him in the best position? Cole losing to Gargano and somehow pulling a strong pull, somehow pulling off the victory against Matt Riddle. But Matt Riddle just got done losing to Velveteen Dream at the last takeover, so he's due for another win. And what better person to beat at takeover than a veteran of the caliber of Roderick Strong? Yeah, as we talked so, about earlier, Roderick Strong makes his name during the match, not by the pinfall victory or pinfall loss or submission line. Like, like nobody, nobody really cares about his win loss record because when you watch him wrestle and do a backbreaker seventeen hundred different ways, you're just like you're entertained. Yeah, he entertains the fuck out of you, and you're like, fuck yeah, Roderick Strong, upper mid card as hell. Yes. Upper he, mid card he, as hell. He is what we like to refer to in the wrestling community as the gatekeeper. Because he, like, a, a win against him will put you in the main event picture. A loss to him will put you, shuffle you way back down to the bottom of the card. So if anything, maybe there's jealousy that Roderick Strong loses. And I think Adam Cole is primed to win here. Because I don't think he loses to Johnny Gargano twice in a row. Just saying. But I, the only way I can see Cole actually pulling off the victory is shenanigans probably by Roderick Strong. Maybe he interferes. And if I can't win, neither can you. Not even that. If, if they both Cole, lose. If Cole does win, it'll probably be because of Strong. Oh, okay. There you go. And then from there, like, um, Cole will still say he did it, like, single-handedly or that even though the Undisputed Era had his back, he could have done it without them. And 
that's that sets up for the split there. So either way, things don't look good for Undisputed Era. I don't think they do. But the real story is the match, and there's a lot of offense naturally. And then Matt Riddle completely no sells a German suplex and an insiguri. Like, or a kick to the head in general. You don't kick Matt Riddle in the head. No. <laughs> general rule number two. <laughs> nope. So, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and bump it up to four. I would say it's off a good show, but it really wasn't. There's a lot of great segments, a lot of build towards the um, NXT takeover. Oh, the two in-match, in-ring segments were better than the two in-ring matches. Yeah, so... My so opinion. So, Fight four. Me. Yeah, I am going to agree with you at four stars. Yeah. Originally, I thought I was going to outrage you, but um, I can't see giving it four and a quarter. No. Um, especially not off the back of a great show, because it just it wasn't a great show until the main event. Yeah. I really enjoyed the main event. Four stars all the way. The, the segments kind of outweighed the matches. <clears throat> they really did. And that's okay. But uh, I think the matches should have more weight on a show. And the matches just weren't great. I mean, Mansoor looked great there at the very end. And Candice LeRae... Candice LeRae, ser Candice LeRae served her purpose. She won her match, which was great. But then she got the beat down on her by Shayna Baszler. And, you know, Shafir and Duke. And that's uh, for Io Shirai to interrupt. That was or, fun, but it was real brief. Yeah. So, solid four from both of us. So, I would say check out the match, because the match was really entertaining, oh, yeah. and then the, the, the shenanigans finishing, even though, you know, it's obvious, it was still great. It, it doesn't matter if you really care for Matt Riddle's, like, gimmick that he does and everything, just watch the dude in the ring. It's almost poetry in motion at this point. He's so settled in to, like, the style that they do there. And it complements anybody he's in the ring with so well. And that's what I think it is. The fact that he's got that own style of his that kind of meshes in. It's got the MMA style in it, but then he's also got more of the amateur style. And a lot more of the, um, he's just nailing these kicks at this point. What's getting it for me is the, the other stuff. Like, selling. Yeah, selling. He sold that ab injury just so good. He is so good at selling kayfabe injuries, and it's like, it's hard to believe he comes from a real fight sport. Yeah. Into something where, you know, you're pulling punches because you're not actually trying to hurt somebody. And uh, he's like, okay, so uh, I know what it feels like to have my fucking rib broken by a punch, so I'm just going to fake that. And it's like, man, that works so well. Yeah. You know? <laughs> I'm, maybe he's never had a broken rib, but I'm sure he's had some bruised ones. Anyway, yeah, I, I, Matt Riddle is growing on me every time I see him. He is getting better and better. I he, just, used to be, he used to be, God, but now it's, all right, cool, let's see what he pulls off in this one. I think the problem originally was just, you know, to keep his in-ring mystique, you know, he didn't get in the ring but a couple of times in a several-month period where most of the time we just heard him talk. And Matt Riddle, as, as a promo artist, can turn you off from the character, Yeah. in my honest opinion. Mm -hmm. um, but once he gets in the ring, it's like, you know what, never mind. Be all the weird surfer bro guy you want to be. As just long as you keep, yeah, keep kicking ass in the ring, in that fluid, just stuff that, like, it's like, I've never seen that before. I, how am We're, I, how do I not expect something, you know, I don't expect... A guy like Matt Riddle to pull off something that I've never seen before. Yeah. Well, I was about to say, like, any, anytime he rolls that power bomb over and play like either the knee strike or the or the or the kick, is just always so sick looking. Uh, the next spotlight we do needs to be on Matt Riddle. Probably. Support. No DQ. That brings us to the end of this episode of What's NXT. Thank you for joining us. Please join us tomorrow for our episode of the NXT Party. We will be reviewing. Let's see, NXT UK episode number 44. Yes, Dunn versus Walter 2. Yep, and we should be having Owen Finch on the big screen. So good but welcome back for Owen. It's been a few weeks, almost two months, I think. Yeah. It's been a while, so that'll be fun. Um, and if you'd like to join us on a future episode of the NXT party, come have a spot of NXT with us. Help us review a future episode of NXT UK. 
Um, you can find me on Twitter. Go to nodq.com forward slash Stefan. That's S-T-E-F-A-N. Or if you just want to look me up on Twitter, it's at Stefan R. Osborne, O-S-B-O-R-N-E. As always, the R stands for restricted. You can also find the gentleman on Twitter. At NoDQ General and also my Facebook group Armbar, all capital, A-R-M-B-A-R, exclamation point. point. Uh, come join us for memes, discussions, general tomfoolery. General <laughs> tomfoolery. <laughs> should have a subsection for that. Jim and Tom <laughs> Fullery. That's where you can't get in trouble for non-wrestling related topics. Yep. I, I, I was about to get that. That's See, not... administrator. Doing yeah. some administration. We need a subgroup. I don't think they'll do that, but we might figure it out. So, yeah, join us on Armbar. Um, add us there, not on Facebook. Facebook is spoiler free. Yep. Add us on Twitter. And if you want me to follow you back on Twitter, just send me a message on Twitter and say, hey, I'm following you. Follow me back, and I will absolutely follow you back. There's just so many of them, and a lot of places, especially professional re- wrestling news websites, kind of, kind of Twitter accounts, will follow you for just so long, and they've got bots that do it for them. Mm-hmm. And if you don't follow back, they unfollow you. Yeah. And I'd like to wean my myself away from those. So, but if you want me to follow you, yeah, I will. Um, and then find us on YouTube on our channel. That's Aftermatch Wrestling, all one word, A-F-T-E-R-M-A-T-C-H, Aftermatch for Wrestling. Mm-hmm. And that's where you can get these videos a little bit earlier, and you can also get them in HD. Um, we do get throttled down a little bit on no DQ, not going to lie. But, uh, <laughs> it's the exposure, people. <laughs> <laughs> it's, uh, it's the same product, it's just you can uh, see all the hairs on my beard on our channel. If, all, all, all the and all the hairs on his beard. Mm-hmm. So if if that's why you tune in for the, gray, yeah. the awesome beardage, then yeah. uh, you'll want to watch it on Aftermatch Wrestling. Oh yeah. And if you like our video, click Majestic. the like button that is underneath me. If you like all of our videos, you should probably click the subscribe button that's underneath Jerry over there. And uh, if you are on Aftermatch Wrestling, do us a favor, click the like button that's down there. It'll bring up a little bar. And you can share us to Facebook, you can share us to Twitter, share us to YouTube. It makes it a lot easier for people to click on it and go right to our page. Um, our goal is 100 subscribers. We are currently, I think, at 77, 78, somewhere around there. Mm-hmm. And uh, we're well on our way, but it's been slow going the last few months. And at 100 subscribers, we will start doing this show, What's NXT, live. That'll be live on Aftermatch. The goal is... At 7 o'clock in the morning on a Thursday, we might be able to get a few people that are up, want to watch the show, and ask us questions. And we can answer those questions at the end of the video. Yeah. Just, you know, interaction. That's what we're looking for. What, what do you guys put in your omelet? We'll answer that. But also, if you want to join us on the big screen, we do the Rated R Rapport. That's where we just bullshit about topics that are going on or whatever comes to mind. Movies, shit like that. Um, we also do Aftermatch Presents. Um, we've done one with Colin Andrew. I plan on getting through all four of the uh, NX team's four horsemen. Yep. And do uh, a little bit of one-on-one questioning with them. Um, just usually what gets you, in, what got you into wrestling, kind of shit. So if you want to join us, find me on Twitter. Find Jerry on Twitter. Leave us down in the comments an email address that worked for Chris Mace. Yep. We're just looking for new members of the NX team for people to help join us and talk about wrestling. So, thanks for joining us and talk about wrestling. For the general Jerry Slaughter, I'm the wizard of NoDQ, Stefan Osborne. Thanks for joining us, and we will see you in NXT time. Support NoDQ. Got it right the first time. That's right. Did I remind you by calling you both names? Uh, uh, I'm actually getting more used to you, right? <laughs> Yeah, we're really pushing that gentleman nickname, uh... Because technically speaking, he's not a general of anything. He is generally a gentleman, though. I have I, um, I, I, general knowledge of, like, wrestling in this about it. I think when it comes to wrestling nicknames, it's okay to call somebody a general. But at the same time, it would be good to have a backup nickname. Yep. I have two. Why shouldn't the gentleman 